All right, everyone. So we've had the passing of Uncle Monk very recently. Um, today, we're going to be showing you the ceremony, the traditional ceremony here in rural Thailand, which is a little bit different for monks to like a civilians, normal Thais. Um, maybe Damo can tell you how it's different. Like, how does the funeral for a monk differ for? From the normal person, actually, because he quite he he been a monk for more than thirty years, he quite famous. So normally, like uh, he have some people respect him as well. And then uh, when become a monk and become like in the temple for a long time, and uh, they not just burn the body, and uh, they will keep it because they believe that he still around. And then uh, to be. Uh, you know, thinking about him and some people that love him, that can come and still see him, even that he in the coffin. Coffin, yeah. It's uh, some some monk that put in the glass coffin, so you can see the body, the the body like uh, still fresh. You know, they mm. they know the way to 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 keep the body in the coffin, and uh, but for normal people, the body just burn. And uh, for him, we decide to keep in our culture and his local culture over there. They like to keep in the temple. In the temple first, and uh, and also before, be long time ago, he told me that he want to uh, please keep keep his body because still have some people want to see him. Some people can can't join uh, the uh, funeral ceremony for him. They can come and see him, even that it's just in the coffin. So you were quite close to Uncle Monk as well. Out of all of the family, you spoke to him probably one of the most, right? Yeah, it's like uh, normally he called to my mom every day, but my mom the kids play phone, so she not pick up. And then when I'm here, came back and live in Thailand, uh, he called every day. He want to see Tit, talk to Tit every day. He want to see Hugo. And, yeah, he call me every day, talk every single thing, so I know uh, some important thing as well. And so at the moment, you're still grieving a little bit, still a bit hard for you, right? Yeah, it's hard for all, uh, for our family because it's like uh, we still not believe that he passed away. Yeah, sometimes I'm thinking like uh, uh, it's every 6 p.m. Nobody call anymore, you know. <laughs> it's a good memory, like sometime. <laughs> you get upset. <laughs> so, um, all right. So let's. We're going to go to the ceremony. We put this together for you because some people knew Uncle Monk through the vlog. So you guys have been watching this vlog for a, a long time, and you know Uncle Monk. Also, we want to give you an insight into um, the, the funeral of a, a monk, of a Thai monk. So we put this together. Um, we, we're putting this to, onto YouTube as an educational documentary. However, we do feel that um, it's not, it's not going to be monetized. I, I think that YouTube won't allow uh, this, this to be monetized. I'm not sure. It'll be up to their content reviewers. So if you would like to support the content, you can become a member of the channel or Patreon or um, you can support it that way. So um, we're going to go over to the ceremony now and walk you through all of the steps of the funeral of the monk and uncle monk who was uh, a wonderful gentle soul 35 years a monk and uh, i was very privileged to know him for the short time that uh, we knew each other together <laughs> Welcome everyone to this special video where we pay tribute to the life and legacy of our beloved Uncle Monk. The funeral traditions and ceremonies for monks differ somewhat. Normally at a funeral the body would be clothed in white. For this washing ceremony that we're seeing here where people come by and they wash Uncle Monk's hand. In this case because Uncle Monk was a monk 
He is dressed in the orange colored garments. People are coming by washing his hand with flowers in it. His body has recently been transported from the house here to the temple. And this event has brought together family and friends and fellow monks from all around the village and Uncle Monk's temple, including surrounded towns and cities also. They've come from miles around to see this. The funeral rites and rituals are deeply rooted in Thai Buddhist traditions and they guide us through the sacred journey of remembrance and letting go. The ceremony is adorned with vibrant floral arrangement, symbolic offerings and meticulously crafted decorations that symbolize our Uncle Monk's journey to a higher plane of existence. It is time for reflection and prayers and chants that echo through the halls of this beautiful temple. This is Damo's sister that is called in from Germany. She's quite upset that she could not make it here, though she has to work and she cannot get the time to come. Uncle Monk was a beloved part of the family. He was loved by so many. And we share this occasion with you guys today in the hope it's educational and interesting and for those that also knew Uncle Monk through the vlog. Now, what is he uh, give respect to Uncle Monk? And, uh, yeah, we come uh, here all day, and in at night time, at night time we're gonna do like a pray from the monk. It monk pray for him. <laughs> so this is Otis's and Hugo's first ceremony like this. I explained to Otis what's happening. He's been involved in every step of the way, and this is not a sad time. Otis is very comfortable with this, although he was very close to Uncle Monk. As I mentioned, Uncle Monk was a monk for over thirty-five years and is well respected within the community. Another interesting part of this ceremony is that we brought Uncle Monk's body from the house and it is now situated in here, which is a coffin refrigerator. This keeps the body cool and cold for the three or four days that these ceremonies take place. Sometimes they can even go on longer. So Uncle Monk is situated in there to keep the body cool. It's a refrigerated coffin. Thai Buddhists believe that meditation and chanting can bring peace to the departed soul. Monks lead the family and attendees in the meditative practices and recitation of sacred texts such as the Pali Kanun to help guide the deceased on their spiritual journey. You can see the children here are also taking part. Remember Thai Buddhists believe in the cycle of life and death, with death seen as a natural part of that cycle. They hold the belief in karma, the law of cause and effect, where the actions performed in one's life influence their future existence. Thai Buddhists also believe in the concept of merit making, where performing good deeds can contribute to a favorable rebirth. So it's the famous Otis Cam. He's still getting his bearings with the camera. Otis, not doing too bad. Here you can see all of the family offering the monks food. This is uh, an offer of service, it's to build merit. It is what we call Tambun in Thailand. Tambun is helping out the monks here, giving them food and taking care of them throughout this ceremony. As the ceremony has moved forward a couple of days now, we are joining the monks here for lunch. The lunch has been prepared by all of the local villagers that come in also in order to make merit. They provide the food, they bring the food for the monks to eat. The monks will eat first and then here you have Damo's mother preparing the food for everybody else to eat. Of course at the end everybody chips in and does the dishes this is another form of merit making the whole village joins in these ceremonies it is a community effort and that keeps the costs down also the spirit is generally jovial and people are having a good time so next is quite an important part of the ceremony it involves the alms giving with ribbon flowers for giving alms and to make merit, which is common in the Buddhist religious traditions. These are small ribbons that inside, in this case, contain soil, but often also contain money. These ribbons with soil inside have been blessed by the monks. And people also say their own blessings to them before they put them here, ready for a later part of the ceremony, which we're going to show you.
So now we move on to the preparation of the coffin. Uncle Monk's resting place for the next two to three years before he is cremated. What they're doing here is putting pieces of paper down that will collect any moisture. And here is the coffin. These coffins cost around 15,000 baht. Actually not that expensive in comparison to the West. And you will see they're placing money inside. So I've been told this is to pay his way in the spirit realm. Nobody really knows what happens there, but in case he needs it, he's got some dosh. Next, the monks have changed Uncle Monk's robes. They've taken him out of the refrigerator coffin and putting him into his coffin now. This is the last chance for the family to take a look at Uncle Monk, the last glimpse they'll have of his face for at least the next two to three years while he is buried before his cremation. Uncle Monk and Otis were actually very close. Uncle Monk took a particular liking to Otis always gave him some pennies when she, he came round and so he was a good friend and I don't think Otis is going to forget him anytime soon and here the final chants and prayers are said by the monks and friends and family present before we move on to the final parade of this ceremony <laughs> So now we're going to do the parade and bring the Uncle Mang, uh, the body of the Uncle Mang, to put in his house. So we've had the bathing ceremony, the monk chanting ceremony, and now the family lead the procession to Uncle Mang's concrete coffin. The monks follow behind the procession, but you can also see there are many villagers and people that actually we've never met before. People that knew Uncle Monk over the years that have come to join in the procession. You can also see that the army are carrying the coffin. I asked about this and these soldiers really respected Uncle Monk and so they volunteered to come and carry the casket. You can see the long piece of string which goes all the way back to the temple, Uncle Monk's temple. This represents the movement of his soul from the temple into the concrete burial place which is under this small shed here. It is Buddhist tradition for people to circle the shed three times counterclockwise before heading in to put the coffin inside the concrete box where it will remain for two to three years. So as the ceremony is nearing its final stages, people are throwing small ribbons full of money. You can see the kids in particular are running around trying to get them. But most people want these not because of the money that's inside the small package ribbon, but because they are good luck charms. Now you will remember earlier we saw bits of soil that were wrapped up in ribbon. Well that's these that they're putting inside the concrete box with Uncle Monk. And this is to represent the burial. This is the dirt that would usually cover him in a representation of the burial. The concrete box is now being sealed up and it will remain sealed for three years with him inside. People are paying their final respects and prayers to Uncle Monk, Damo included here, saying their final goodbyes. Although when the time comes, he will be exhumed and he will be cremated. And that's for the future. Here is a poignant moment of Damo's dad, who is Uncle Monk's brother, saying his last goodbyes. And Damo told me that what he's saying is, don't worry about anything. Everything's been taken care of. You can pass over in peace. So when the monk has been particularly renowned or famous, or they've been a monk for a very long time, in Uncle Monk's case it's 35 years, they make an amulet 
uh, a sacred subject for people. Thais believe that these amulets will protect them from danger, make them invincible even, and bring good luck. At the end of his life, Uncle Monk told my wife, please give these amulets to people who respect me. And he kept 500 of them in his room, and I think a few more were made. The villagers are now all trying to get one. In order to bring that good luck and sacred protection from danger, he was well loved by many Uncle Monk, a teacher to many of the younger monks, and a good example for many decades to the villagers and the local people. These amulets will become treasured possessions for them. They will take them home and put them next to their prat. And we thank you for joining us on this little journey. And we hope it's been educational and insightful for you. Thanks for subscribing and liking the content, of course. Big thank you, guys.